morning, everybody. Uh, so uh, we'll just get right to it. Uh, I would like to call to order the Public Improvement Commission hearing of November 17, 2022. Uh, Mr. Lyman, would you please take a roll call? Certainly. Would the representative of the Public Works Department state his or her name for the record? Yasha Franklin Hunt. Property Management Department? Callahan. Transportation Department? Amy Cording. Inspectional Services Department? Brian Ronan. Water and Sewer Commission? Denise Devlin. Disabilities Commission? Sarah Leon. Great. All present, we have quorum. Thank you very much. Um, so first uh, first item today is hearing minutes. Uh, at the request of the Public Improvement Commission staff, the acceptance of the minutes of the PIC hearing held on November 3rd, 2022. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of November 3rd, 2022. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. All right, thank you. Uh, on to utility poll hearing continued. Uh, utility poll hearing continued one on a petition by Verizon New England Incorporated for utility poll installation within Belgrade Avenue, Public Way, West Roxbury to install one new private utility pole to be located on its southwesterly side at address number 408 Northwest of Kenneth Street, Beach Street. Uh, this, uh, I believe, was last considered in uh, November uh, Third, and we continued it to this hearing. So, would the proponents please introduce themselves, their affiliations, uh, briefly describe the project to us again, and uh, any additional information or updates since our uh, last hearing on this? Good morning. My name is Alexander Lassie Marrero, M A R R E R O, an employee of Pike Telecom and Renewables LLC, an authorized contractor for Verizon New England Incorporated. So the last time this petition was presented in front of you, basically we presented that we were proposing to place a new poll number 37-2 in front of 408 Belgrade Avenue to provide service for 408 Belgrade Avenue. We received word from the council that you wish that the plan be upgraded as there was existing sewer and drain lines on the sidewalk where the poll was proposed. As you can see in front of you, we have updated that plan and submitted it to you for your consideration. Basically, the poll will be placed between the curb and the existing drain line on the sidewalk in front of 408 Belgrade Avenue. Uh, I don't believe any other information was requested by the council. Uh, so if anybody has any questions, I can answer them at this time. Commissioners? Oh, thank you for updating the plan. I uh, appreciate it. Um, the only comment we have uh, is just if you TV the drain before and after, um, that's something we're going to require for this petition. And you can send the, um, the tapes to Peter Salvatore at the Boston Wire and Sewer Commission. I can give you that information um, after the meeting. That's fine. Understood. Any other comments or questions from members of the commission? Comments or questions from on um, this project from PIC staff or members of the public? Uh, I will remind the public uh, if you wish to add testimony uh, at any point, please use the raise hand function at the bottom of your screen when the appropriate petition is being heard. Um, I see none for this, though I will mention that the Verizon has confirmed that this pole installation will have no impact on the nearby um, mature tree, uh, and uh, th that's the expect uh, the expectations that that will be the case. Excellent. Uh, hearing no other questions, uh, do I hear a motion to approve utility pole uh, continued hearing number one? I'll make a motion to approve a petition by Verizon New England for a utility pole installation in Belgrade Avenue, as read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. Thank you very much. Uh, on to our next item of business. Um, 
And I do believe, just to uh, reiterate the comments by uh, Mr. Lyman, I do believe we have a number of people who are uh, on uh, the call today to comment on this. So um, just as a, as a uh, as an as a intro to how we work, um, we'll typically uh, read through the project, uh, uh, ask the presenters to uh, speak a little bit more about it. Uh, we'll have time for members of the Public Improvement Commission to uh, ask questions, uh, and then we will open it up to PIC staff and the public. So um, please, if you would like to speak on this matter, um, uh, please use the raise hand function, as uh, Todd asked earlier. Uh, and uh, we will call on folks individually uh, when we're uh, uh, ready to uh, have public uh, testimony on this. Uh, so our next uh, item of business is public hearing continued number one on a joint petition by the City of Boston Transportation Department and the City of Boston Public Works Department for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in West Roxbury consisting of curb realignment, roadway and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, storm drain infrastructure, landscaping, driveway curb cuts, raised crosswalks, speed humps, and a median island. South Street between Bussey Street and Washington Street slash Firth Road, Lawrence Street between Cummins Highway and Blakemore Street, Firth Road between Florence Street and Washington Street slash South Street, Sycamore Street at Florence Street, Brookdale Street at Florence Street, Archdale Road between South Street and Washington Street, Basile Street between Washington Street and Lindale Street, uh, Lindall Street between Cummins Highway and Murray Hill Road, Murray Hill Road between Washington Street and Florence Street, Bexley Road between Washington Street and Florence Street, Mossgrove Avenue between South Street and Washington Street, Lesher Street between South Street and Washington Street, Stillman Road between Washington Street and Fondale Road, Granfield Avenue between Washington Street and Fondale Road, Fondale Road between Washington Street and Stillman Road, Bradeen Street, southwest of Washington Street. This was new business on October 20th, uh, had its first public hearing on uh, November 3rd, and as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division, Pacific Repair Plan, Neighborhood Slow Streets, Lower South Street and Vicinity, Roslindale, 21 Streets, dated November 17th, 2022. Uh, would the presenters please uh, introduce themselves, their affiliations, walk through uh, what is proposed here, uh, and then we will take uh, questions from the commission. Good morning, everyone. My name is Stephanie Sastian. I'm the Active Transportation Director in the Boston Transportation Department um, and the Program Manager for our Slow Streets Program. I'm joined today by Dan Marrow, also in BTD, our senior engineer on the project, and uh, Alexandra Johnley from Kittleson & Associates, the um, consultants uh, who have been tasked with this project. Um, sorry, there's Alexandra down there, um, and Dan, great. Um, uh, we are excited to um, come back today after a continuance last week. Um, we uh, have been working on the neighborhood slow streets plans for the lower South Street and vicinity um, area for uh, just over two years now. Um, we selected uh, this area in 2020 uh, for traffic calming improvements. Um, based on the presence of multiple community assets such as the Arboretum, um, Healy Field, and the Sumner School, um, as well as demographics in the area, um, which have a high number of people who are older, um, people who are below the age of 18, and people with disabilities. Um, these populations are known to suffer more um, in a crash uh, with a vehicle. Um, the point of our Neighborhood Slow Streets program is to bring speeds to 20 miles per hour on residential streets throughout the city, as well as improve safety at crosswalk locations near um, important destinations. Um, we launched this project uh, publicly in September 2020 um, with a workshop, an outdoor workshop at Healy Field. Um, this was uh, widely publicized um, and shared uh, via flyers and postcards to residents. Um, we have since had five additional virtual meetings um, and several in-person outdoor meetings, um, both at Healy Field um, and uh, near South and Archdale, um, to gather feedback um, on the plans. Um, the initial meetings uh, were and feedback 
um, helped us understand the priorities for the area in addition to general traffic calming and speed reduction, um, where people felt that the crosswalks needed to be better um, and safer for them and their families. Um, based on that feedback, um, we began design work um, in early 2021 um, and shared back uh, our understanding um, to get consensus with residents in the neighborhood. Um, we have since been working hard to detail the plans, make adjustments based on um, feedback from the general neighborhood as well as um, from people who specifically live along the streets. Um, we are excited to come today with a plan that we feel has um, strong general support, um, accommodates a number of the concerns that folks have brought up in the last couple of years regarding parking um, and uh, applicability of various tools. Um, we are also excited to be adding some speed humps within um, the Arboretum itself um, to help slow people as they're approaching the neighborhood um, and not just right as they enter it. Um, so with that said, um, I think the only thing that I want to point out is that has changed since our last um, conversation is that we are very excited um, that we will be introducing bioretention areas um, in the neighborhood and specifically at the intersection of South and Archdale um, within the curb extension. Um, and with that, I'll hand it to Alexandra to walk through the plans. Thanks, Stephanie. Um, like Stephanie mentioned, I work at Kittleson and Associates and I'm the project manager on the consultant team for the Lower South Street and Vicinity Project. I will walk through these first nine sheets of plans to describe the specific repairs. So beginning at this first sheet here, the work performed for the Lower South Street and Vicinity neighborhood includes improvements on South Street and neighborhood streets from the Arboretum in the north to Washington Street and the neighborhood is bound by Cummins Highway to the south and Florence Street to the west. The project includes improvements along Florence Street as well and all of the neighborhood streets in between. The plans detail the construction of 41 speed humps in the neighborhood. These speed humps are spaced 150 feet to 250 feet apart to promote consistent vehicular travel speed through the neighborhood at 20 miles per hour. Each speed hump was field verified to make sure they don't conflict with utilities, driveways, or fire hydrants. And variations in these speed humps are, are a result of these features. This first sheet is showing an overall map of the speed humps, and the, the next four sheets show a more detailed view of each of the proposed speed humps. So I'll just click through here to get to sheet five or sorry, sheet six. This sheet is showing the specific repairs at the Florence Street Firth Road intersection, which includes edge lines being reset, the existing sidewalk being extended, the reconstruction of pedestrian ramps, the construction of a raised crosswalk across Florence Street, and milling and repavement of the roadway surface. This work includes the adjustments to storm, storm drain features to maintain drainage at the intersection. This sheet shows the specific repairs on Florence Street at Sycamore Street and Harrison Street. This work consists of the construction of a raised crosswalk across Florence Street at Sycamore Street, extending the edge lines, widening the sidewalk, reconstructing the pedestrian ramps, the milling and repavement of the roadway surface, and new drainage infrastructure. This sheet shows the specific repairs on Florence Street at Brookdale Street and Marion Street. The work consists of extending the edge lines and reconstructing pedestrian ramps at the intersection, the milling and repavement of the roadway surface, and new drainage infrastructure. On this sheet, it, it is also showing a proposed speed hump at 200 Florence Street. This sheet shows the specific repairs of realignment of the edge lines along South Street, full depth pavement replacement at the intersection, the installation of a flush concrete median, widening the existing sidewalk and reconstructing pedestrian ramps, milling and repavement of the roadway surface, 
and new drainage infrastructure. At this intersection, like Stephanie mentioned, we have some updates to the pervious areas. The new proposed design will include fire retention areas consistent with the new environmental standards for city infrastructure, and these areas will be maintained by us. With that, I'll open it up to the commission to see if there are any questions about the proposed uh, improvements. Commissioners. Uh, hearing no uh, further questions from the commission, no questions from the commission, uh, PIC staff, uh, any questions or comments? No, not at this time. All right, um, we will uh, begin calling up folks uh, from the public who have their hands raised uh, in the order uh, that they were raised. So if you would like to comment, please uh, use the raise hand function in Zoom and we will give everyone a chance to speak. Uh, we'll start with uh, Patrick Sewell. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to thank uh, the commission for, for allowing us to speak. And also I want to thank the uh, Stephanie and the others from the, the city of Boston who've spent so much time working on this and communicating with us, finding a good plan that works for our neighborhood. Um, I care a lot about this project. I, I have two small children that I walk with every single day through this project area, uh, down South Street to Bazile Street, where my kids go to school. Um, and, you know, it, it ought to be a lot safer uh, for us to do that, but there's a lot of speeding on South Street uh, that we think this project will remedy. Uh, and there are just generally unsafe conditions throughout the project area. Just last week uh, at 8 a.m., shortly before I walked across Washington Street with my kids, there was a serious collision on Washington Street next to a, a crosswalk where we crossed. Uh, that's terrifying, and that happens way too often. Earlier this year, uh, a car flipped on our street, on South Street, in this project area, uh, because it was speeding, as cars often do. Uh, to cut through uh, to get away from Washington Street traffic. Um, very strong support for this project, and I know that we've, uh, that the neighborhood has a lot of support. Uh, the project team's done a great job communicating, and uh, the neighborhood has really uh, rallied to support this work and communicated well. So thank you, and I urge you to uh, please approve it. Thank you very much. Um, next up, uh, Steve Gag and Laura Gag. Gag, excuse me. Hang on just a second. All right. Um, good morning, commissioners. Uh, my name is Steve Gag, and I live at 631 South Street. I strongly support the Slope Street project for the Lower South Street area of Rosendale. I've been uh, part of a large group of residents pushing for this much needed traffic calming project for over five years. And for the record, I've been part of many City of Boston projects that involve community engagement over the past 40 years as a resident, urban planner, community leader, and organizer. This project has had the best community process of any I've ever been involved with, and most of it has occurred during the pandemic. It was a well-publicized process that used flyering, postcards, and email that went out to hundreds of households. A staff open to suggestions and available to meet over the phone, online, or in person um, on site and several in-person and online meetings that were transparent and well-managed. I hope that you vote in favor of this project, and thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, uh, David Holtzman. Hi, uh, thanks um, uh, for, uh, to the commission for uh, taking on this project. I feel like it's really important also, and uh, I also uh, am thinking about the incident that took place uh, several months ago where the car flipped over because it was going too fast uh, here on South Street. Now, I should mention I live at 603 South Street. Um, and in that accident, luckily, no one was injured, and the car ended up on the sidewalk instead of in the yard or living room of the house that it ended up in front of. But I just feel that for young people living in the area, any of them that could have been aware of that happening, uh, it could just be a horribly traumatic experience. And the truth is every day cars zoom down South Street way faster than they should. And I know for years the residents have been trying to do something about this. And this finally feels like 
a solution that could actually make a difference. And so for that reason, I heartily encourage the commission to support it and uh, to have the project built as quickly as possible because it is a truly dangerous, daily, a truly dangerous situation. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, Elizabeth Costello. Hi there. <clears throat> Thank you so much. My name is Elizabeth Costello. Um, I'm here with my husband. Andrew's also on the call. We live at 610 South Street. And I just want to echo everything my, my neighbors have already said, um, saying, you know, thank you for putting this amazing project forward um, and for showing your support for this. We, are, we also have two young children um, that walk to the Sumner Elementary School. We walk to the Healy Playground. We walk to the Arboretum daily. And, you know, if you measure, if you measure the street from, from Blesher Street, where the stop sign is, to Washington Street, where the stoplight is, it's one third of a mile of uninterrupted roadway that you know these impatient drivers just treat it as a speedway to get to Washington Street as quickly as they can and I have felt and like many of us on this call whether you have children whether you're walking your dog however you're a pedestrian we have too often felt like that terror in your heart as these cars are flying around the bend where this crash happened that we're just describing it is terrifying to cross the street it's terrifying to approach the intersection at Murray Hill as I walked to take my daughter to school because cars, there's nothing to stop the cars um, from flying through that intersection. There are so many points to this plan that would add so much quality of life to um, our family and every other family and every other resident in this. And so we please encourage you to, to pass it today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Jody Burr. Hi. Thanks for. Uh, taking the time to listen to uh, our perspectives. My name is Jody Burr and I am also a resident of South Street. I also want to say that I'm, I, I'm speaking on behalf of uh, two neighbors who I think have written letters to, um, in support of this project, who live at the corner of Firth and Florence Street. I know that there's been a, a kind of um, overwhelming amount of support from South Street residents and it's a much bigger project area than this. Uh, I do also want to just share my support and also my gratitude for uh, the Slow Streets project having been, um, having taken our neighborhood and our application, it was the third application that um, a group of residents uh, with a lot of input from our neighbors um, put into uh, have this Slow Streets project put it, um, begun. And it's very exciting to be at this moment where we are looking at um, actual implementation. Um, I want to say, first of all, just echo my concerns about speeding in front of, just as an example, I have, pers I've lived in, uh, I've lived at 647 South Street for 15 years. I've personally witnessed three major crashes directly in front of my house um, over the years, including my parked car being totaled by a reckless car. Um, this really is a serious concern on our street. And I want to say the specific um, engineering uh, proposals that are being put, that are part of this project are, I think, what we have been really hoping for. The, the street narrowing, um, especially at that dangerous curve, the um, speed humps, which I know were you know, a controversial thing in the city for a long time. I'm so glad to see them back. Um, I think all of these, uh, and particularly paying attention at the intersections, uh, and sorry, also crosswalks. Crosswalks are so needed, and I'm just grateful to see all of those with um, the community input being um, reflected in this project. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Karen Weber Salamanca. Yes, thank you for, let's see. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to the commission and to Stephanie and her team for making uh, this project um, for working on this project. And I have serious, and my husband and I have serious concerns about this project. It doesn't mean that we wouldn't accept it, but what it does mean is our, our end of the street, Archdale Road and the corner at South, have not really had a chance, like the others on the other end of South Street, to really go over this project, nor do we see the same kind of issues in terms of speeding and accidents. What we do see is, when we go down South Street right now, there's cars parked on both sides of the street, 
we can't, I don't, we can't even go 10 miles an hour down the street. So I don't know how people are managing to race down it, except if it's the day that there's no cars on one side. But what, I'm, what we're concerned with is this intersection, we have not seen any, you know, any much speeding in 29 years living here, nor is there any data showing that there's any accident in front here. Sorry, Jody. Um, I see you shaking your head. There's no proof that trying to calm this intersection will do much for the rest of the street. I think if you guys want to have speed bumps all the way along South Street to calm things down on your end, that's fine. But we're very, very concerned on this end that the speed bumps are going to create problems for Archdale. The bump out is going to create problems for school buses and trucks trying to make the turn. And then they, they're going to go right into a, 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 a crosswalk. And it's, I just, and we're losing a lot of parking over here as well. But there's a, a community has not had a chance to come together and talk about this. It may have been um, the residents of South Street, but not the residents of Archdale and the intersection over here. So I would really like to see what we can do to have a proper conversation about how we can, we're not opposed to calming the street and we don't want it to be a freeway down South Street. We understand that. But I think we really, really are concerned that this is getting brushed over because a number of residents on the other end of South Street feel that this will make a difference. We don't see anything that would do change. much to change the situation from this end. And we, ha we just saw the new plan. We haven't even really seen the new plan completely. So, and, and Washington and Archdale is not Archdale. I, that is off of Washington Street. I, I saw that in the chat. Um, you have to look at Archdale. Cars are not racing down Archdale. And there's data from the city that shows that um, there's no one going over 25 miles, that the mean, the mean of people traveling at what speeds, they're only going at the most 25 miles an hour and a, less than a fifth of the percentile of people going through this intersection are, are going higher than that at, at 30 or 31 miles an hour. But there's no evidence showing us that this is a dangerous intersection of except what people say they feel. And feeling is not the data. So I, I just feel that the commission owes it to our neighborhood to let us be more inclusive, to have a full conversation and to see whether or not these, um, the proposal is something that would really, really work. And our neighbors are, are um, you know, we have several neighbors who are very concerned because they weren't included on that conversation. Do you want to say anything? All right, thank you. Thank you, Karen. Uh, next up, Laura Sitterly. Uh, good morning, commissioners, and thank you again for inviting all of us to comment on, um, on this project. I and my husband are in full support of passing um, the Slow Streets Initiative. We have been working on this project as a neighborhood um, and in, as an inclusive neighborhood for since 2017. Um, there have been numerous, numerous ways that we have engaged our neighbors, including our community list serve, of which I know that many people on this call are um, uh, uh, participate in. Um, all along the way, we have asked our neighbors to be involved. Um, we've done flyering, we've had community meetings, we've had, we even had a survey early on in the process to get more neighborhood involvement and engagement in this process. And that's just the work that we as a neighborhood have done. Um, I just wanna thank Stephanie and her team, the engineers and everybody who's worked on this team because they have really led a very transparent process. Um, as Stephanie mentioned, and I just want to reiterate, um, during the pandemic, having five virtual meetings, three outdoor, uh, you know, socially distanced meetings in person, it was just an incredible process. And this allowed everybody to get involved um, in, um, in putting, pushing this forward. 
So I just want to um, thank you again. I uh, agree with all my neighbors and everything that they've said. The speeding, um, entering the Arboretum from South Street in Archdale is in my opinion incredibly dangerous. And when I have my elderly parents here, I do not want to um, take them on that route. So uh, thank you. And I just really um, respectfully ask that you consider passing this South Streets initiative as soon as possible. Thank you, Laura. Uh, Jordan from Councilor Arroyo's office. Thank you, Chief, um, commissioners, and PIC staff. I just wanted to go on record and let you know the councilor is in full support of this initiative and just wanted to state that for the record. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Lori Radwick. Lori, did we lose you? Let me start again. Thank you to uh, everyone. There we go. Yeah. Thank, thank you to um, thank you to everyone for uh, having this uh, open forum and for the community engagement. My name is Lori Rablin, and I, among others, started the Rosendale Coalition. And our role is to share information about the civic and other activities with our members and to spread awareness among those potentially affected for good or whatever. So several coalition measures, members are affected by this project and they're working with their neighbors to weigh in. My role has been to request information. I've not taken a stand for, I've not taken a stand against this project, but I do stand for fiscal responsibility, transparency, and accountability. Over the past number of months, we've attended these meetings and we've heard the staff say that extensive traffic calming measures were necessary due to speeding, auto crashes, and injuries. We repeatedly asked for information to support these assertions to no avail. A day and a half ago, we got a very large amount of data and we did the best we could to review it. So here goes. We learned uh, from what we reviewed that there's no evidence of speeding relative to the posted limit of 25 miles per hour no evidence of auto crashes or injuries, and no evidence of demographic data counting persons under 18 or over 65 collected in the past few years in two areas, that being the Florence Street area and the Archdale Road and South Street area. So here goes. You looked at the plans today for Florence Street, you can see the full extent of the changes, and we understand the breadth and depth and the potential monetary costs and effects and of others. And um, you review the pages so you don't need the page numbers that I review. However, the BTD produced no da data to justify these changes on Florence Street in the information we received. There are no primary source residence perceptions data, except for one remark in the 2022 perception data that I tabulated and submitted to the commission. There's no speeding information, there's no crash information, and there's no demographic information for the entire uh, set of thorns in your plans. In terms of the Archdale Road and South Street, I think it's really important that the commission document the input that's been given here for South Street and also for Archdale Road, because it's not in the written record. And if someone were to audit your records to say, was this funding justified, it would be very difficult to show. There are a great deal, as, as referenced earlier by, I think, um, Laura Sitterly, uh, Mr. Gagg's 2017 submission gave a lot of receptions data, but not for the two areas that I specified being Florence, Archdale Road, and South Street. The speeding information for Archdale Road and South Street, um, and the commissioners have the printouts. These are 25 mile per hour zones. Cars go fastest, oh, and the data were collected over a two day sampling period in February 2022. Cars go fastest in the South Street, South of Bussey area. The mean is 30.6, the median is 30 miles per hour. It seems that cars go fast, may slow down actually, the Archdale East of South Street area and the South Street overpass. For the Archdale East of South Street area, the mean speed's 24.6, the median's 25.0. And for South Street at the railroad overpass, the mean is 24.7 and the median's 25. There's no crash data in the written record presented for the Archdale Road and South Street area, and no recent demographic uh, data about people under 18 over 65 in the past two years. Uh, the project in its entirety will cost about $2 million. The testimony um, presented here by 
a very articulate uh, group of South Seas residents. It still needs to be complemented with the objective of empiric traffic and other data to justify this cost. And um, the department's own database, as presented now, and reflected in the information request does not support this project in the areas of Archdale and South and Florence. I'm gonna close by saying that a recent PIC meeting served the stage for a harmful social media post about neighbors who spoke up. Harmful comments have been aimed at us on social media in the past as well. And I expect that this may happen now that I've spoken up again. I certainly hope it doesn't. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lori. Uh, next up is Greg, no last name. Thank you. Uh, it's Greg Tobin. I'm, I'm a senior citizen. I live near uh, Florence. I live on Sheldon. I walk Florence, across Florence, uh, almost every day. Uh, it is a speedway. And uh, these uh, measures will help address that. I am strongly in favor of them. Uh, Florence is where there is a, uh, a community pool a playground, a field, uh, and uh, a school uh, nearby. It is a very busy corridor. Cars use it as a cut through from Hyde over to Washington. I've uh, witnessed speeding cars almost every day. I urge uh, the commission to approve these changes. Stephanie and her team have been absolutely um, attentive to input. I've attended three uh, Zoom meetings and one on site. Uh, they've uh, taken criticism, they've uh, reflected on it, and they've produced a plan that is both reasonable and well-designed. And I urge passage. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Uh, next up, Beverly Spence. Hi, Jasha. And thank you for the meeting, and thank you to, to everyone. Um, I live on Archdale Road. My question is to the engineer. Why wasn't speed humps on the design for South Street because I've heard all residents on South Street con are concerned about speeding down South Street. I would, I would think that they would put some speed bumps on South Street to attend, address that issue. And I don't see, I don't see anywhere in the plans that has any speed bumps on South Street and they, and they are the ones that are talking about speeding that they are, are concerned with. So why is that not on the plan? That's my question. Um, also, I'm not opposed to doing the uh, street calming issues because I live, my mother lives in Manapan and on Delhi Street, and there was a child that was killed on Delhi Street. Um, I don't know how long, for a long time. All, all of a sudden, in 2022, they have finally put some speed bumps on Delhi Street to uh, address the speeding of that occurs there. So that took like almost 20 years to happen. So um, that, that, that must be my question. So, but that those speed homes do help calm the traffic. But my question is, why is that not on South Street, the speed bump? Because that will slow down the traffic on South Street. Thank you very much for listening to me. Bye. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Stephanie or Alexander, do either of you want to address that question? Um, Alexander, do you want to take it as the engineer? You are muted. Though. You're muted, Alexander. Okay, I'm unmuted now and I'm sharing my screen. Um, I did want to, maybe I'll zoom it just so it's clearer. Um, this, this first sheet of the plan is showing the installation of uh, one, two, three, four, six speed hubs on South Street, um, south of Archdale Road, which is this street right here. And it, we also have two additional speed hubs north of Archdale Road. Um, so just wanted to address the comment to say that we, we are proposing speed humps on South Street. Great. Thank you very much uh, for that uh, clarification. Um, next up, we have Anna Jacobs. Thank you. Um, I also live on South Street. Um, I'm not a car, car owner. So at the, uh, the times and days when I walk or bike in this neighborhood, which daily includes South Street, Archdale, uh, Firth, and Florence to take my son to school, I think there's not enough security features for pedestrians and cyclists. And my experience with speeds at different times of the days, perhaps different times of the days when my neighbors closer to Archdale Street live, is that speeding happens and it's especially concerning on trash days 
when trash um, cans are um, on the sidewalks and partially on the roads and I have to bike with my, I have to tell my eight-year-old to bike with me on the road, um, not on the sidewalk. So I am full support of this project and I also wanted to address that uh, Florence Street uh, certainly does not have enough uh, crosswalks and the intersection that you stressed, the Firth and Florence, uh, would, would be such a major improvement if there would be a bump out Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Next up, uh, Dennis Kirkpatrick. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I believe that there's quite a few of you here commenting that we're led to believe that there was massive opposition to this project. Uh, I'm very sorry that that happened. Uh, I am not against any of this. I have asked serious questions about policy, procedure, and design, uh, especially in my neighborhood, which was never a part of the original application, but was added by the Boston Transportation Department. Sadly, after the last Public in, uh, Improvement Commission meeting, uh, there were posts in social media that were used to denigrate and discredit us because it was perceived we were against this. We are not. I live right around the corner from Florence Street. It's a speedway. We need to do something. But I should not be taken as an opposition person for simply speaking out and being engaged in the civil process. I, I am engaged in many of these areas, and I'm very saddened that individuals who are proponents of this project took the social media in an attempt to silence civil discord. And uh, it's a shame the necessary people in city government have been no, uh, advised. Uh, at least one person employed by the City of Boston Police Department has reviewed those posts and encouraged me and several others who were targeted to file a police report because there's con concern that this might incite people against us personally. And I'm very concerned about this. I would point out, Mr. Chairman, that your silence regarding this speaks just as loudly as your spoken word. And so you need to be aware. And that also goes for the elected officials represented in this meeting who are also informed about this. Uh, I intend to continue to speak out to offer my opinion and continue in this civil process. And I do not see myself being cowed. I'm sure there are going to be people who are convinced that I am some kind of radical right boomer, when in fact I voted for Bernie and I'm quite left of center. So let's proceed. Let's get the questions asked. Uh, if it takes a little bit longer, fine. And to amplify, on public engagement. Just the afternoon after the last PIC meeting, I actually got an email from one of my neighbors around the corner who said, I recently heard there was something going on about this. I sent in a letter of approval earlier, but I haven't seen any follow-up. Needless to say, I referred them over to Slow Streets and told them that this is progressing through. I did not take a position. I still do not take a position and I need that to be on public record, and I'm hoping all of you will not be threatened in such a manner as some of us were, simply because we venture our opinion. I am terribly ashamed that there are proponents of various items in our little corner of Rosendale that will take to social media to try to silence uh, our voices, especially when parts of this nation are trying to shut down that voice that votes. Be aware. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kirkpatrick. And I will just say for the record that um, you know we uh, expect and, and hope for uh, only respectful dialogue on issues before the PIC uh, or any other public issues and uh, certainly um, would uh, condemn any uh, threats or uh, attacks uh, against individuals uh, as it relates to any action that we're considering and uh, certainly 
appreciate the respectful tone that everybody has struck, and I uh, presume we'll continue to strike in this meeting today. Um, next up, uh, Benjamin Bruno. Hi, thank you very much um, for the opportunity to speak. My name is uh, Ben Bruno. I live with my family on Colgate Road. Um, it's just uh, parallel with the next street over from Archdale. Uh, we live a block, just a block from the South Street and Archdale intersection. Um, crossing at that intersection is the most terrifying part of my daily life. Um, that is really not an exaggeration, and that is my lived experience with my two children. Um, you know, so I'm so excited about the safety improvements for our neighborhood, and I, I want to express my full support for this project. Uh, I urge its passage with, without any further delay. The changes really can't come soon enough for my family. Um, before I pass along the, the mic, I, I do want to acknowledge some of the obstructionism on display in this process. Um, you know, I harbor no ill will towards any individual, but I do resent comments calling the community engagement inadequate, um, especially while taking up the most time in community meetings in this process. I thank you all, um, Stephanie, Dan, uh, Anna, everybody, for your work on this project and for your patience. Um, however, I think it's also important that we recognize this obstructionism for what it is uh, and take action to disempower such tactics. Uh, in future processes uh, regarding street safety. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ben. Uh, next up, uh, May Tobin Hochstadt. Apologies if I messed up that last name. And uh, uh, I believe Lori Radwin, uh, you're unmuted and we're getting a little bit of background noise if you wouldn't mind muting yourself. My apologies, here. my apologies. No worries, thank you. Uh, May, go right ahead. Thank you all, I'm sorry, I'm a little sick. Thank you all very much. Um, May Tobin Hochstad, I live on 27 Colgate Road and I'm married to Ben Bruno, who just spoke. Um, uh, first of all, I just want to echo um, all the folks who spoke today about um, the great benefit of these safety improvements for our neighborhood, as well as the, um, the daily danger that I experience biking down Archdale Road um, under the overpass and then on South Street to take my kids to school. Um, Thank you so much to the Slow Street team for all the amazing work that you've done, and especially for the amount of community engagement that you did. I ran into you in so many different neighborhoods um, on, uh, on Healy Field, um, out there engaging the number of meetings that you've held. Um, and I just would also like to comment that um, after the extensive community involvement and overwhelming support as evidenced on this call, um, I was surprised to learn that this meeting and the last PIC meeting would also require community attendance to ensure that the project moved forward. Um, you know, attending a midday meeting is not possible for many community members, and also community members were not proactively invited to participate in these meetings, and I didn't even know that this was something, a moment when it would be required to avoid derailing or delaying the project. So I just ask the commission and the city to provide greater clarity in the future about when and where community input is requested so that all of those who are supporting this project can make sure that our voices are heard and avoid a situation where a few people joining a meeting and others who weren't even aware of it would um, make it seem like this was not something that the community had such great support for. Thank you again for taking the time to listen to all of us here today. Thank you, May. Um, I do not see any other raised hands. Uh, if anyone else would like to speak, now is your moment. All right. I, um, I'd, like, I'd like to, can I um, add one more thing? Yes, you may, uh, go right ahead. Thanks. So I'm aware that there's been a lot of um, residents from South Street that have been involved in this process. But in, the fact is that residents from Archdale Road have not been involved in this process. And so I really implore the commission to, uh, it's not that I'm, um, oh, by the way, it's, it's not a visual triangle, it's an actual, um, it's going to be, a, what is it, it's like a, it's, ra it's like a raised piece on the road, I, from what I understand. Stephanie oh. can explain it. Alexandra but, can talk about that. Can you please finish your initial question, Karen? Yeah. So I, I, I really, really feel that if you want to go ahead on any other boat, 
that this South Archdale Road vote should be held until everybody on Archdale has a chance to learn about what is proposed in front of their homes. Because you are, we, we, we don't know how many parking spaces are being taken away in a neighborhood that's already at capacity. We don't know exactly what the impact of these speed humps will be. There are a number of questions we have about the engineering on Archdale Road and that have yet to be answered. And we just feel that there, that this is not, this shouldn't be a finished deal today. So thank you for, um, and I'm not speaking just for myself, but for my husband, my family, and for a number of residents along the street. Thank you. Uh, if I may respond to that. Um, By all means, Stephanie. Uh, we have certainly heard from people who are not in this meeting and who have not come to meetings and whom have not talked to you. Um, we do hear from a lot of people on many streets, including Florence and Archdale. Um, and uh, we feel confident that we have engaged uh, or offered the opportunity to engage um, every resident on what is happening um, on their streets. Um, Alexandra, could you please sh again show the plans um, and describe the uh, splitter triangle at South and Archdale um, and what the material is. Um, I will note that the parking changes are have been also clearly described and are available on the website. Sure. So I'm sharing my screen now. Um, at this intersection, we have revised a previous design, which had a raised crosswalk on the um, east approach here. And with some of those revisions, we've modified the scored concrete median. Um, the reason this is a scored concrete median, it's, it's um, flat with the roadway surface. Um, that is to accommodate truck turns uh, traveling through this intersection. Um, uh, one reason, uh, as part of the public feedback received at this intersection, we removed the raised crosswalk on this approach, um, incorporated another speed hump on Archdale Road, as Jen on the, the east here. And we relocated that crosswalk to the west approach. This is not raised, it's just a, a, a regular crosswalk across the roadway. Um, and we also, in order for this crosswalk to, um, for us to locate a crosswalk here, we had to add those two speed humps um, further north on South Street to slow the speeds of vehicles approaching the intersection um, so there's adequate sight distance on the roadway. Um, uh, this, this view here is showing the signing and pavement marking improvements, which kind of further define where those crosswalks are being located. Um, this curb extension curve was designed so that a vehicle can travel 20 miles per hour on this curve and, and not faster than that. So we've incorporated um, these elements to slow speeds approaching and at the intersection. Stephanie, is there, are there any other uh, design features I should touch on here? I think that was the only question. All right, um, seeing no other uh, uh, raised hands here, um, do I hear a motion to approve? Uh, hold on, BC. Karen, uh, would you like well, to speak? We, we, yeah, we have one other question. Why not start go with the speed bumps? Oh, am I, I'm okay? I'm, I'm muted. Yeah, go ahead. go ahead. Why couldn't we start with the speed humps along South Street first and see how that does in terms of slowing things down before you start making changes at the South Archdale intersection. Hi, Karen. Um, as Alexandra explained, um, these changes at this intersection are necessary to maintain that 20 mile per hour speed limit. Um, the radius of this curve um, is such that drivers um, are able to um, greatly exceed that speed limit. 
Um, in addition, uh, the uh, we are required by federal law to provide accessible crossings. Um, this location has uh, three legal, though unmarked, um, crossings. Um, with this project, we are formalizing two of them. The curb extension um, that is on the Archdale Road side is required to provide an accessible ramp um, for that crossing. Oh, okay. But what about, I mean, it, it, it still doesn't, that, that um, bump out does not um, allow so much for safety because the trucks and buses that come around it have such difficulty right now managing the turn. And then you're going to put a crosswalk right at that turn. Uh, we're concerned that yes. there's going to be more accidents right now. There, and there's no data showing that anyone is speeding through that intersection. And that's data Karen, that came from I'm sorry, the but you have misread the data that has been shared with you, um, which we also explained in a public meeting. We do not use the mean or um, to understand speeding. Um, we actually use the 85th and 95th percentiles to understand um, to what degree speeding is present on any given street. Um, on both South and Archdale, um, both of those values exceed 25 miles per hour. Um, and certainly are not aligned with the 20 mile per hour regulatory speed limit that will be applied as part of the neighborhood slow streets program. Um, as there's far nothing as right now marked for 20 miles an hour. We do extensive uh, review internally um, and uh, using computer generated software to understand what um, is necessary um, in order to have those turns happen as Alexandra explained. And we have been modifying the design to ensure that all trucks and buses that use the corridor will be able to make the turn. Um, we do understand that it is not an easy turn to make. Um, in Boston, we have a lot of intersections that are um, not meant for the larger vehicles that we have today. Um, however, it is still possible for them to make those turns and they will need to be making them more carefully and slowly. All right, thank you very much, Stephanie. Do we hear a motion to approve uh, public hearing continued number one? I'll make a motion to approve a joint petition by the City of Boston Transportation Department and the City of Boston Public Works Department for the making of specific repairs uh, in all of those streets is read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. Um, thank you very much um, to everybody who came and spoke. Um, before we move on, uh, I actually want to sort of take off my hat as PIC chair and use this as an opportunity to say a few things on uh, behalf of Mayor Wu's administration and my capacity as her Chief of Streets and Public Works Commissioner. Um, first off, I want to say thank you to Stephanie and her team for all the hard work on this project over the past two years. Uh, I know that this effort is involved, as we've heard, extensive resident outreach, public meetings, feedback opportunities, and multiple rounds of design revision. Uh, and getting to this point has required substantial investment of time and energy by the city team. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, second, I want to say thank you to the community members who have advocated for this project and who have been pushing the city to create safer neighborhood streets for years. Uh, in some cases, decades. Um, we ask a lot of you, including showing up for a hearing in the middle of the day on a Thursday, and that's just to get something as fundamental as a street where you feel safe. Um, the third thing I want to say is that the city needs to do better. Uh, it should not take extraordinary advocacy to get basic safety infrastructure on our streets. We should not ask you to plead with us for your safety or that of your kids or that of your neighbors. Almost every single day, I hear from people in neighborhoods in every part of Boston about the fear they feel on our streets. And yes, those feelings do matter. And I see statistics. We still have thousands of people every year who are injured on our streets. And in some cases, people are, uh, you know, most years, more, more than a dozen people are killed uh, on those same streets. I know that we can and we must do more to produce better and safer infrastructure uh, in the city of Boston. And I want to say that what we just approved, what, what we reviewed today, represents well-established best practices for neighborhood streets. These are reflected in the city's complete streets guidelines, in NACTO's urban street design guide, in publications from MassDOT, in publications from the Federal Highway Administration, 
These changes are not novel, they're not exceptional or experimental, and their efficacy is not a question. What we approve today is a set of changes that bring these streets closer to what decades of research and experience has shown us results in safer streets for all road users. And so the city will always accept and consider public input on any project that we do, but safety should not be up for debate and it should not be as hard as it is or take as long as it does for us to get these kinds of safety changes implemented in the city of Boston. So I say this to acknowledge that we as city leadership have work to do. Um, we must do more, we must do it faster to rebuild our streets so that they are safe and comfortable for everyone. And we must look at and change the policies and the processes that often result in protracted, uh, protracted process and, and excessive delay in doing this kind of critical work. So I just want to say to the members of the public here, you have my commitment and the administration's commitment to make these changes. I'm really excited to see these improvements get implemented in Rosendale next year. Uh, and that's going to happen while we work to accelerate the pace of change, uh, like changes like these in neighborhoods across Boston. So um, just thank you. Uh, I wanted to take a moment to, to, um, to just express our position on this. Uh, and. I think with that, we will move uh, back to our normal uh, course of business uh, with the PIC. But thank you all very much for coming. All right, so we are on to public hearing number one on a petition by the City of Boston Public Facilities Department for the acceptance of a pedestrian easement adjacent to Parish Street, Public Way, Dorchester, located on, south of, on its southerly side at the side of 44 Winter Street East of Winter Street, this was new business on November 3rd, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Pedestrian Easement Plan, Parish Street, 44 Winter Street, Dorchester, one sheet dated September 30th, 2022. The presenters please introduce themselves and uh, provide a brief overview of the project and an update on any changes since this was last considered. Yes, uh, good morning, Chair of the Commission, members of the Commission, and members of the public. Uh, my name is Elisa Riaga. I'm with BHB, the project, of rec the project engineer of record. Um, I'm stepping in on behalf of Joe Capolino, who is here for new business. He's currently out of office and cannot make it. Um, I'm joined by Scott Dupree from the city's public facilities department and Rita, and Rita Turjecki from Anum Architects. They're the architect of record for our project. Um, so as discussed last week, I mean last two weeks ago for new business, our project site is located in the neighborhood of Dorchester. It is bound by Parish Street to the north, East Street to the south, Winter Street to the west, and the old BFD Engine 17 building to the east. So as discussed new business two weeks ago, uh, the project is proposing the construction of the new fire department engine 17 building. It has a frontage on Winter Street. And in order to support this new building, there will be several streetscape modifications to um, Winter Street and Parish Street. So as I mentioned before, the first action is the pedestrian easement. Um, on new business, one of the comments for this plan was to extend the ped easement from the east side to cover the entirety of the sidewalk. And as you can see, we did make those edits over here. So any questions on this one, questions or comments? Members of the commission. PIC staff or members of the public? No, I think we're all set. We appreciate the project uh, incorporating our comments. All right, do I hear a motion to approve public hearing number one? Make a motion to approve a petition by the City of Boston Public Facilities Department for the acceptance of a pedestrian easement in Parish Street as read into record by the chair. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. On to public hearing number two on a petition by the City of Boston Public Facilities Department for the vertical discontinuance of portions of the following public ways in Dorchester, vertically above the grades of the sidewalks, Parish Street on its southerly side, at the side of 44 Winter Street, generally east of Winter Street, East Street on its northerly side, generally east of Winter Street, this new business on November 3rd, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Vertical Discontinuance. East Street and Parish Street, 44 Winter Street, Dorchester, one sheet dated September 30th, 2022. Uh, would the presenters please reintroduce themselves, their affiliations, uh, and give us an update on uh, the project and the changes uh, since our last hearing. Uh, good morning again. My name is Elisa Riaga from VHB, the project engineer for this project. I'm joined by Scott Dupree from the Public Facilities Department and Rita Terjecki from um, and I'm architect, the architect of record for this project. Um, so for vertical discontinuance, we are proposing a portion of Parish Street and East Street to be vertically discontinued to allow for um, two building overhangs that extend into the public right of way. There were no comments or questions at new business. Um, both overhangs are heat traced and internally drained and both of them have at least 10 feet of vertical um, clearance between the sidewalk and the bottom of the canopy, I mean the overhang. So any questions or concerns? Commissioners? Yeah, I see staff, members of the public. All set. Do I hear a motion to approve public hearing number two? I'll make a motion to approve a petition by the City of Boston Public Facilities Department for the vertical discontinuance in Parish Street and East Street is read into record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. On to public hearing number three on a petition by the City of Boston Public Facilities Department for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Dorchester consisting of curb realignment, sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, street lighting infrastructure, and driveway curb cuts. Winter Street at address number 44 between Parish Street and East Street. Parish Street, east of Winter Street. East Street, east of Winter Street. This new business on November 3rd is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Pacific Repair Plan, Winter Street, Parish Street, East Street. 44 Winter Street, Dorchester Sheets, dated September 30th, 2022. The presenters please reintroduce themselves, give a brief overview of the proposal and any updates since your last hearing. Yes. Um, good morning, my name is Elisa Riala. I'm with VHB, the engineer of record for this project. I'm joined by Scott Dupree from the city's public facilities department and Rita Terjecki from Anum Architects, the architect of record. Um, our project proposes the streetscape modifications along Parish Street, Winter Street, and a section of East Street. Um, we're proposing new city standard um, concrete sidewalks. We're proposing a new curb cut along Winter Street uh, to allow for the fire trucks to exit the building. And we modified the existing curb cut on Parish Street. Um, so last new business, the PIC staff had several comments and questions we, which we have addressed since. Um, last week, we met with Sarah Leong from the Commission of Persons with Disabilities. We met with Mike Sinclair from the Curb Ramps Department and with Todd Liming uh, to discuss the existing receiving pet ramps along the site and the receiving pet ramps have been field verified and we have confirmed that they are ADA compliant um, and we did agree to change the detectable warning strips so they are the right color which are yellow and that they extend from joint to joint which is the ADA standard. Um, we also discussed the corner of East Street and Winter Street, which is currently an apex ramp. And 
we work with them to change that design into actually having two pedestrian ramps instead of just having one. Um, as you can see in the corner over here, and as a result of this change, uh, the curb radius changed to 10 feet, which is pretty close to the existing radius. And we are also proposing to remove the existing BFD call box. Um, and the new location will be coordinated between BFD and the Public Works Department. Um, it was also requested at New Business two weeks ago to, by Amy Cording from BTD to get a copy of the traffic study that we made, and we have sent that to Amy. Um, another comment was the existing concrete light pole on Parish Street um, over here, which is right next to the existing fire department um, building. And we did reach out to the lighting department, and they are OK with us removing the concrete light pole as long as um, so currently this uh, the playground that is right in front of uh, BFD engine they get their power from this light pole over here so as long as the playground can still maintain their power we can remove the light pole and that scope of work will be carried on the phase two of this project when we remove the existing um, fire station. And the last comment, um, we had an old label that said uh, protect and maintain concrete sidewalk on East Street, but we have confirmed that there is no existing concrete sidewalk here. So we're just maintaining what currently exists out there. And we added a note to remove and reset existing VGC on this portion of East Street, which will have to be done in order to accommodate um, utility connections. And I believe those are all of the comments from New Business, and they have all been thank addressed. You. Thank you very much, and thank you for uh, such a thorough review of uh, how all those changes were uh, uh, addressed in the plans. Uh, commissioners, any uh, follow-up questions, comments on this? I just wanted to thank the team um, for um, incorporating some of our feedback, especially in regards to the intersection um, of East Street um, and Winter. Thank you, Sarah. Excellent. Um, PIC staff, members of the public? All set. All right, do I hear a motion to approve public hearing number three? Make a motion to approve a petition by the City of Boston Public Facilities Department for the making of specific repairs within Winter Street, Parrot Street, and East Street is read into the record by the chair. Good. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. Thank you very much. I uh, appreciate it. Thank All you. All right. Moving on to public hearing number four on a petition by the by Boston Medical Center for the granting of an earth retention license for the installation of a temporary crane pad within Massachusetts Avenue, Public Way, Boston proper, located on its northeasterly side at the side of 850 Harrison Avenue, generally southeast of Harrison Avenue. New business on 11-3, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Temporary Crane Pad, Massachusetts Avenue, Boston, one sheet dated June 3rd, 2022. Uh, would the proponents please reintroduce themselves, their affiliations, provide a quick uh, overview of the proposal and any changes that have been made since your last hearing. Uh, good morning, Chairperson Franklin Hodge and members of the Commission. Thank you for hearing us this morning. My name is Howard Mosier from VHB. I am joined by Brendan Whalen from Boston Medical Center and Mike Weaver from Haley and Aldrich, geotechnical engineer. I'll quickly go over what we presented uh, a couple weeks ago and address some of the comments. Um, just to locate our proposed uh, project, we are at Boston Medical Center in the South End, located on Mass Ave between Harrison Avenue and Albany Street. This project that we're working on is uh, included in its uh, institutional master plan and involves, in addition to the existing Yawkey building. Uh, Yawkey building spans over Mass Ave. 
and Boston Medical Center is doing improvements up several levels above the street grade, almost on a roof level where they adding some space and doing some modifications. To support the project, they did an exhaustive study of locations for tower cranes. And the only feasible location is indicated roughly where the blue pin is. And that's uh, a location of the sidewalk that's a, a mix of public and private. And you can see where the building spans across Mass Ave. And this was the only feasible location to locate a tower crane that would feed the entirety of the building without impacting nearby buildings or other operations. As such, since the tower, tower crane pad would extend into the public right of way, we're seeking a uh, approval to locate the foundational elements of this tower crane foundation, which is shown on the uh, presented plan. Um, this plan includes the addition of uh, piles that will be drilled into the soil to support the tower crane foundation. And upon completion of the project, the tower crane pad and foundation elements will be cut off and removed which would be six feet below the sidewalk, 10 feet below the roadway grade. At the new business hearing, there was a couple comments. One was about the bus shelter. Um, whilst the project did seek and received permission to remove the, one of the two bus shelters, the construction manager on the project has been found a way through the logistics planning to retain both bus shelters. So that is um, satisfied there. Um, we were asked to share the CMP with transportation department staff uh, Ms. Cording, which we did. And we also reached out to Clarence Perkins at Public Works to talk about snow removal. We have not received any comments back from Public Works on that, but I will note the good news is since most of this project site is under the building, hopefully there's not that much snow to remove. Let's, let's cross our fingers for a good winter. Um, so with that, I conclude my presentation. Any questions or comments? Uh, commissioners? Um, I believe uh, we had raised the question of sort of uh, potential uh, crossing, people sort of crossing mid-block at this location at our last hearing. Um, has there been any work done on the, the traffic management aspect of this or the pedestrian management aspect of this? There, there a, a small amount, uh, Chairperson. Uh, it, the the mid-block crossing would be at an awkward location and it might introduce some trapping that was something we were trying to avoid um, this is a fairly busy uh, corridor as as many people know and we're worried about the introduction of pedestrians might cause some trapping in the travel lanes so at this time we thought it was best to keep the pedestrian detouring as opposed to a mid-block and we can obviously monitor the situation as construction logistics are established and adapt if necessary Okay, yeah, I think there was some concern about the potential for um, uh, people not necessarily obeying the heat door or crossing mid-block uh, absent a uh, designated place to do so. And uh, so I think if, if there's a commitment to monitor um, for any uh, pedestrian challenges at this location and potentially look at hardening the center line or making some other changes that would make it less uh, possible for people to, to cross unsafely mid-block. Uh, if that proves itself to be necessary, um, that would be appreciated. Uh, much appreciated on that end as well, and, and we'll keep an eye on it. Okay. And uh, just to be clear, is there a commitment to do any snow uh, clearing uh, as, uh, as necessary? I just want to make sure that uh, I share your hope for a mild winter, but, um, you know, absent a, a kind of specific commitment from the Public Works uh, Department to do that work, uh, we want to make sure that the proponents will step up and ensure that that is cleared as needed. Yeah, this will be an active kind of work zone there, and the uh, contract will be responsible for maintenance, and I'm sure uh, and if, uh, Brendan Whalen is on, he uh, echo that they'll, they'll take care of the snow removal in the bike lanes. Yeah, so. that is true. Uh, but we'll make sure that it's maintained. Excellent. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, commissioners, any other comments, questions? PIC staff, members of the public? I think we're all set. I apologize, uh, Yasser, um, and the petitioner. I actually just received, this is Denise Dell from Water and Sewer. I just received a uh, comment. Uh, we do have a drain, an 18-inch drain that's underneath the pad. It just needs to be TV before and after um, to put the pad in and remove it. 
And thank you. As I mentioned at New Business, uh, Ms. Devlin, we did TV already, and we are we are okay. committing to the post construction inspection. So we are oh, okay. Did pre. Sorry about that. Yeah, great. It's Thanks okay. for repeating it again. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Hearing no further comments, we hear a motion to approve public hearing number four. I'll make a motion to approve a petition by Boston Medical Center for the granting of an earth retention license in Massachusetts Avenue, as written to the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. On to public hearing number five on a petition by Seaport Square Development Company, LLC, for the making of specific repairs within Seaport Boulevard, Public Way, South Boston, located on its northeasterly side at address numbers 101 to 121, generally between Pier 4 Boulevard and Boston Wharf Road, consisting of new wayfinding signage, new business on 11-3, uh, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repair Plan, Signage license, Seaport Wayfinding Signs, 101 to 121 Seaport Boulevard at Harbor Way. Seaport, one sheet dated October 2022. The proponents please introduce themselves, their affiliations, and give a brief overview of what's proposed and any changes since your last hearing. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. My name is Jody Sanchez from Goldstein and Stores. I'm here on behalf of the petitioner, Seaport Square Development Company, LLC, the master developer of the Seaport Square project. I'm joined by Dan Sullivan of the petitioner and John Schmidt from Niche Engineering. Uh, we were, as I mentioned, we were here at New Business a few weeks ago for approval of specific repairs involving the um, installation of wayfinding signage within Seaport Boulevard at Harbor Way. As mentioned at New Business, the sign proposed today is, is consistent with a master wayfinding uh, signage plan presented uh, before the commission at a March 2021 public hearing. Um, since New Business, we've been working with PIC Council regarding an amendment to our master LMI for um, specific repairs to incorporate the sign. And I'll now turn it over to John to go over the signage plan. Oh, good morning, commissioners. John Schmidt with Niche Engineering. So we're proposing one wayfinding sign um, at, at, uh, along, at between 101 and 121 Seaport Boulevard. The sign is located within the uh, frontage zone. So it's outside the concrete path of travel. The sign is approximately nine to 10 feet tall and is similar to the five other signs that have been recently constructed uh, in the Seaport neighborhood. Uh, that's, that concludes my presentation. Commissioners? PIC staff or members of the public? All set. Do I hear a motion to approve public hearing number five? Make a motion to approve a petition by Seaport Square Development Company, LLC, for the making of specific repairs within Seaport Boulevard as read into record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. Thank on you. To public hearing. On to, thank, uh, you're welcome. On to public hearing number six on a joint petition by Seaport L5 Title Holder, LLC, and Seaport Square Development Company, LLC, for the granting of a projection license the installation of a blade sign over a portion of the sidewalk within Boston Wharf Road, Public Way, South Boston, located on its southeasterly side, and address numbers 1 to 27, generally northeast of Congress Street, new business on 11-3, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Projection License, Boston Wharf Road, Seaport Block L1 to 127, Boston Wharf Road, Public Way, Seaport, Boston, one sheet dated October 2022. Petitioners, please reintroduce themselves, their affiliations, provide a brief overview of the project and any changes since your last hearing. Hi, again, uh, Jody Sanchez from Wilson and Stores on behalf of the petitioners, Seaport Square Development Company, LLC, and Seaport L5 Title Holder, LLC. Um, joined by Dan Sullivan of the petitioner and John Schmidt from Niche Engineering. Um, the, uh, the projection license requested today is for a parking sign uh, over Boston Wharf Road, um, and the, that sign is actually attached to the um, Block L5 building of the Seaport Square project. I'll now turn it over to John um, to present the plan. Uh, good morning, John Schmidt with Niche Engineering. Um, these, just uh, for the record, the specific repair plans for the entire block here for the L5 building were, were approved in May of 2021. And then this sign is being added. Uh, as the building is being developed, um, the parking sign came into play. The sign will be over, uh, to address a garage entrance. It will be uh, 10 feet above grade. 
It is a blade sign and it projects about approximately 3.1 feet into the public way, which is about 27% of the sidewalk width. So it is designed in compliance with the, the regulations and policies of the commission. That concludes. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, commissioners? Okay, I see staff or members of the public. All set. We hear our motion to approve public hearing number six. Make a motion to approve a joint petition by Seaport L5 Title Holder LLC and Seaport Square Development Company LLC for the granting of a projection license in Boston Wharf Road is read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. On to public hearing number seven on a petition by SFP Brighton LLC for the acceptance of a pedestrian easement adjacent to Soldier's Field Place Public Way, Brighton, located on its northerly side at address numbers 44 to 46, generally southeast of Soldier's Field Road. New business from 11-3, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Pedestrian Easement Plan. 46 Soldiers Field Place, Brighton, one sheet dated November 1st, 2022. Would the proponents please, re uh, please introduce themselves, give a brief overview of what's proposed and any changes since our last meeting. Hi, good morning. My name is Steve Ballas. Uh, I represent the development team and the petitioners. And we are joined uh, by Carlos Ferreira with MF Engineering that prepared the plans today. Um, can you see the screen I'm sharing? Yes, yes we can. Great. Um, yeah, so the, the first order of business um, is the pedestrian easement. Um, just a, a quick background on this project. Um, it went through large project review, a very extensive uh, permitting process where we worked with you know, all the local neighborhood groups along the way, including the city. Um, we got, uh, we received our BPDA certificate of compliance um, and we just submitted for, uh, to ISD for our permits for this project. Uh, we also have received parks approval. Um, so we went through a very extensive process with all these groups. Um, we presented in front of new business um, last week and we did not have any further changes or questions from that. So I'm, you know, hereby presenting the uh, same plans back to you today. Uh, this first one is for the pedestrian easement, uh, as you can see on the plan here, about 1.75 feet um, that we um, that we're uh, looking for to present to you today. So, yeah, the, here's there's the plan. Um, was going to see if you had any uh, specific questions on it. Commissioners, okay, I see staff and members of the public. All set. Do I hear a motion to approve public hearing number seven? Make a motion to approve a petition by SFP Brighton LLC for the acceptance of a pedestrian easement in Soldier's Field Place as read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. On to public hearing number eight on a petition by SFP Brighton LLC for the making of specific repairs within Soldier's Field Place, Public Way, Brighton, located on its northerly side at address numbers 44 to 46, generally southeast of Soldier's Field Road, consisting of curb and sidewalk reconstruction, uh, as well as new and relocated specialty pavement, street lighting infrastructure, street trees, bike racks, and driveway curb cuts. This was new business on uh, November 3rd as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Pacific Repair Plan 46 Soldiers Field Place uh, Brighton one sheet dated November 1st, 2022. Petitioners, please reintroduce themselves and give a brief overview of what's proposed and any changes since your last hearing. Uh, hello again, Steve Ballas, uh, representing the development team along with uh, the, and the petitioners. Um, again, I'm joined by Carlos Ferreira, MF Engineering, that prepared these plans for you today. Um, for the specific repairs uh, within Soldier's Field Place here. Again, this went through a, uh, a long community process, gaining uh, full support from everyone. Um, what we're looking to do here is um, a new cement concrete sidewalk, new porous brick paver edge, uh, new bike racks. We did get some comments on the bike racks to, to conform with the city, which we got approved there. Um, new street trees, we worked with parks extensively on that. Um, as well as a curb cut location. Um, so I have, you know, presented again a new business last week. We had no further questions or comments. 
So I'm um, presenting to you that same plan and would like to open it up if there's any further questions on it. Commissioners? PIC staff or members of the public? All set. Do I hear a motion to approve? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve a petition by SFP Brighton LLC for the making of specific repairs within Soldiers Field places read to record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed or abstain? So moved. Thank you very much. And on to public hearing number nine on a petition by SFP Brighton LLC for the granting of an earth retention license for the installation of a temporary earth support system within Soldiers Field Place Public Way, Brighton, located on its northerly side at address numbers 44 to 46, generally southeast of Soldiers Field Road. This was new business on 11.3, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Conceptual Temporary Earth Retention Plan, 46 Soldiers Field Place, Brighton, one sheet dated November 1st, 2022. Petitioners, please read and produce themselves, give a brief overview of what proposed and identify any changes uh, that are, uh, 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 have been made since the last, uh, the last uh, hearing. Hi, good morning. Uh, Steve Ballas again, with uh, representing the development team and the petitioners, again, joined by Carlos Ferreira, MF Engineering. Um, and that uh, developed these plans. Uh, this is for our earth retention system. We're working with uh, helical drilling on this. Uh, we presented at new business last week and we had no, no more, no new further comments or questions. So we are hereby presenting the same plan back to you today. Uh, as you can see on the screen here. So just like to open up if you had any further questions on it. Commissioners? Yes, see staff and members of the public. All set. Uh, do I hear a motion to vote? I'll make a motion to approve a petition by SFP Brighton LLC for the granting of an earth retention license and the soldiers field places written to record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? <coughs> so moved. On two. Thank you very much. Thank you very um, much, everybody. Appreciate it. On to public hearing number 10 on a petition by Cambridge Network Solutions Incorporated for the rental of City Shadow to install new telecommunication fiber in existing conduit within Congress Street, Public Way, Boston proper, located at the side of 53 State Street, generally at Quaker Lane. This was new business on 11-3, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division, Granted Location Plan, City Shadow Rental, Congress Street, 53 State Street, Boston proper, one sheet dated November 2022. Uh, would the proponents please introduce themselves, give us a brief overview of what proposed and any changes since your last hearing. Yes, uh, good morning and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm Keenan Brin here on behalf of the applicant. I'm also joined by Han from NBNC Engineering. Uh, the petitioner seeks permission to install a one inch uh, fiber inner duct uh, in a, uh, a vacant uh, city shadow duct. Um, this is going to start at a manhole on Congress Street, which is existing. Uh, it'll travel down Congress Street towards 50, 53 State Street, where it'll turn into the uh, parking garage and terminate there. The entirety of the run is approximately 72 feet uh, from beginning to end. Um, again, this is uh, there was no there have been no changes since the last um, presentation. Uh, again, 72 feet, um, and we don't anticipate any disruption to uh, pedestrian or uh, vehicle traffic. If you have any questions, we'd be happy to take them. Commissioners? PIC staff and members of the public? All staff. Do I hear a motion to vote on public hearing number 10? I'll make a motion to approve a petition by Cambridge Network Solutions for the rental of City Shadow and Congress Street as read to the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
On to public hearing number 11, on a petition by Xnet Systems Incorporated for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit with city shadow within the following public ways in Dorchester. Blue Hill Avenue, generally between Callender Street and Livingstone Street, Johnston Road between Blue Hill Avenue and Harvard Street, Hansborough Street, northeast of Blue Hill Avenue, such Arbutus Street, Harvard Street, generally between Johnston Road and West Main Street, Livingstone Street, between Blue Hill Avenue and Ashton Street. This was new business on 11-3, as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Granted Location Plan, Blue Hill Ave, Hansborough Street, Johnston Road, Harvard Street, Morton Street, Livingstone Street, Dorchester, 15 sheets dated July 2022. Petitioners, please introduce themselves, provide a brief overview of the project and any changes since your last year. Um, uh, good morning again. This is Kenan Bryn uh, here on behalf of the applicant. Uh, I'm also joined by Han from NBNC Engineering. Uh, the petitioner seeks permission to install a fiber run beginning on Blue Hill Avenue, uh, just north of Fabian Street. Uh, it'll, uh, it'll head down Blue Hill Avenue. Um, and continue there for a, a good distance when it uh, actually there's a small spur onto Hansboro Street, but it will continue on Blue Hill Avenue. Uh, it continues down until it gets to Johnston Road where they, it splits off. One, uh, one run it continues on Blue Hill Avenue, the other one on Johnston Road. It turns onto Harvard Street and then terminates after crossing over Morton Street. So that's the termination point for that one. And then the other uh, run on Blue Hill Avenue will continue down Blue Hill Avenue, uh, turn east onto Livingstone Street, and then it terminates on Blue Hill Avenue just after Ashmont Street. Uh, the applicant will be providing city uh, shadow duct, uh, and we'll, we'll make sure that we coordinate with uh, local businesses and neighbors prior to construction. Uh, there aren't any changes to the plan since last time, but if you have any questions, we'll be happy to take them. Commissioners, PSC staff or members of the public, all set. Do uh, I hear a motion to vote on public hearing number 11? I make a motion to approve a petition, petition by Accident Systems for a grant location in Blue Hill Avenue, Johnson Road, Hensborough Street, Harvard Street, and Livingstone Street as read and directed by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. On to new business. Uh, new business number one, 440 and 450 Tremont Street, Millicent Way, Boston Proper, highway discontinuance, vertical discontinuances on a set of joint petitions by Eva White Redevelopment Limited Partnership, Wind Development Company Limited Partnership, CSTO Win Owner LLC, and the Boston Planning and Development Agency. Would the proponents please introduce themselves, their affiliations, and give us an overview of what is being proposed? Good morning, members of the commission, Chairperson Franklin Hodge. I'm Howard Mosier with BHB. I'm joined this morning by Phil Cohen from Wynn and Matt, Lawyer, La Matt Lawler, who is legal counsel. Uh, we're here uh, today on behalf of actions at two existing buildings in the South End located on Tremont Street. Before I introduce the, the entirety of it, I'm gonna have Phil give you an introduction to the project. Good morning, thank you, Harry. Can everyone hear me all right? All right, Phil Cohen here on behalf of the Dalma team. Uh, so yeah, the project is a rehabilitation and a deep energy retrofit of the existing 100% affordable 102 unit Eva White public housing community. Uh, the work is it's a really exciting project that's gonna result in one of the most sustainable communities in Boston and it essentially involves attaching a new facade over the current brick facade. The area that we need will be occupied by that new deep energy retrofit facade. Castle Square Tenant Organization and Wind Development, who are the developers of this project, have partnered with Boston Housing Authority, and the project has received incredible support from the residents, the neighboring Castle Square community, the broader neighborhood, and the BPDA. So this continues to be their rights will benefit the city, not only by rehabbing existing affordable housing uh, for seniors, um, but also by forwarding the city's sustainability goals. We'll pass it back to you, Henry. Thank you, Phil. So on the screen, you're seeing a, a little bit of a locust map of the south end. The two subject properties are here on Tremont Street, Millicent Way, 
is in the back. Going to the next slide. Um, zooming in a little bit, these are the two buildings uh, that are receiving the deep energy retrofits. Uh, and in, in essence, these buildings are the lots. Um, they're, they're almost zero lot line, and there's two buildings that are receiving these benefits in the deep energy retrofits. Um, I'm going to, this is just a bit of a, a, what you would see if you're out there today on Tremont Street looking at the buildings. And this is not what's proposed, this is the existing condition. And, and as Phil mentioned, the goal here, in addition to other mechanical upgrades, is to provide a new facade that provides tremendous energy benefits and, and well as general upgrades to the existing housing. To accomplish this uh, great project, um, we are seeking permission for a couple discontinuances. And the first is on Tremont Street. Um, uh, the existing building is shown in the hatch pattern, and again, it extends almost to the property line. This facade, when they apply it to the existing building, is going to project over the property line uh, a matter of inches, uh, almost up to a foot, and um, to provide the insulative benefits. And as such, we are seeking a vertical discontinuance in two areas, here and here. Both are 61 square feet, very tiny, uh, and uh, they occur about 10 feet above the sidewalk, right up against the existing building. Um, the second discontinuance is a little uh, more uh, full. It goes all the way to the ground, and it's at the end of Millicent Way, which is just a public footway on the back side of 450 Tremont Street. And that is only 32 square feet. So again, uh, some modest discontinuances to support a great energy program. Any questions or comments? Commissioners. PIC staff or members of the public. No, all set. I will say that the BPDA is a co-petitioner on this and we have had extensive um, communication with Lisa Harrington uh, and, and they are signing on as, uh, um, as consenting to all of this work. Excellent. And Todd, just to confirm, our next hearing is on December 1st, is that correct? Yes, correct. All right, will the petitioners be ready to come back for their uh, public hearing on December 1st? We will, thank you very much. Excellent, we will see you then, thank you. Thanks for your help, bye. On to new business number two, 40, 40 uh, excuse me, 84 to 88 Warren Street, Warren Place, Roxbury, pedestrian easement, specific repairs, projection license on a set of joint petitions by Urban League of Eastern Massachusetts Incorporated and Madison 84 Warren LLC. Would the petitioners please introduce themselves, their affiliations, and provide a brief overview of uh, the project and the actions that you're proposing today? Hi, uh, my name is Meg Regan, and I'm from Madison Park Development Corporation, uh, an affiliate of 84 Madison Warren LLC. Um, I'm here um, on behalf of Madison Park and the Urban League of Eastern Massachusetts um, to give you a brief overview of the project. And I just want to start off by thanking uh, the commission and everybody here who has given us um, feedback in order to, to get us here to this point to present to you. Um, so this is a joint project, a joint partnership with the Urban League of Eastern Massachusetts, which I'm sure as many of you know that um, this site has been the Urban League's home for about 27 years. Um, so this project was really their um, thinking of how they could um, ensure their legacy for the next hundred years. And they brought Madison Park on um, to fully incorporate um, what they think is of their own legacy and mission uh, to provide affordable housing and also to maintain their space and maintain um, the great services that they give throughout um, Eastern Massachusetts and Boston and Roxbury. So the project has on the first floor um, roughly 700 7,500 uh, square feet for the Urban League, um, and the remaining ground floor is surface parking. Also, um, so we have 24 parking spaces, six dedicated to the Urban League, and the rest for residents. Um, we do have a one-for-one -one bike ratio. Um, and then the upper floors, um, floors two through four, are for the rental component of the project. So we have 43 rental units all affordable within the range of 30% AMI to 80% AMI. And the top two floors, floors five and six, are 22 homeownership units um, 
also at a range of incomes from 80% AMI, 100% AMI, and 110% AMI. Um, we have received broad support for the project, and I'm pleased to say that we received BPDA Article 80 approval in August. Um, last month, we received ZBA approval. Um, so with that, we just you know, wanted to say what, what a great project it is and how much support we have gained um, over the year-long <laughs> permitting process that, that we've had. Um, I'll turn it over to Coleman for the for the technical aspects. Um, but if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer any of them. Thank you. Uh, I'm Coleman Horsley of Niche Engineering, the project uh, engineer of record for the project. Um, we have uh, three PIC actions for this project. We have a pedestrian easement along Warren Street and Warren Place, specific repair along Warren Street and Warren Place, and then also a canopy license along Warren Street and Warren Place. I will start with pedestrian easement. We have a variable width pedestrian easement along Warren Street starting from the bottom of the uh, building all the way to the uh, rounded corner taking um, back in 1974 of uh, the city. Uh, this will allow a safe uh, pedestrian access amounting to a minimum of five feet um, per ADA requirements. Um, additionally, along Warren Place, uh, a similar aspect, we have a variable width pedestrian easement amounting to 643 square feet. Um, this will, again, allow a very, um, a minimum of five feet of pedestrian access, uh, safe and protected. Um, and I'll go for that, I'll go to specific repairs. So for this, you see the Warren Street specific repair. Um, we are proposing three new tree plantings in addition to maintaining an existing tree. Uh, there is a expanded sidewalk uh, in addition to bike racks with a minimum of five feet of pedestrian access. Um, and these slopes are uh, per ADA requirements. We are also proposing to add, uh, per smart utility program requirements, a dual shadow conduit handhold with shadow conduit and uh, proposed curb uh, bump out with a new compliant ADA ramp um, at the intersection of Warren Street and Warren Place. We have confirmed that the uh, reciprocal uh, ADA ramp is compliant. Um, with that, I'll go on to Warren Place. Uh, Warren Place, we are proposing a curb bump out with a blue bike station. We are proposing a minimum of seven feet of uh, clearance behind the blue bikes and the building for safe pedestrian access. Um, in addition to, as I mentioned earlier, five feet minimum concrete walk, um, which is partially included within the pedestrian easement, as mentioned earlier. Uh, the city uh, had comments about um, the egress doors you can see here. Uh, we have taken those comments into consideration. The only doors that still fall within the pedestrian way are emergency egress doors only, and the main entry door has been recessed um, in order to provide that minimum of five feet clearance for pedestrian access, uh, again, per city comments. Um, we are shifting a curb, existing curb cut um, along Warren Place for the garage access, um, as Meg mentioned earlier. Um, and then I'll just go right to the uh, canopy license and then we can come questions at the end. Um, so canopy uh, license, we have two canopies proposed, one on Warren Street, one on Warren Place. You can see here, there is a canopy license within the pedestrian easement, but not within uh, the public way. Um, it is amounting to about 74 square feet. Oh, I'm sorry, there's one, there's one square foot within the public way, but there's 74 square feet within the pedestrian easement. Um, and then along Warren Place, we have a eight square feet within the public way and 47 square feet within the pedestrian easement. These canopies have details on both sheets. They are internally drained, heat traced, um, and have a minim minimum of 10 feet clearance beneath them. And with that, I rest for questions. Commissioners, questions? Hey, um, thank you so much for um, the project overview. Um, I just um, wanted to flag um, one thing for um, when this project proceeds um, to construction. It does look like on Warren Street in front of the building um, and your adjacent building, there is a stretch of um, accessible park on street accessible parking spaces. Um, so if you could just coordinate with my office um, when the time comes to um, get those spaces uh, relocated if those spaces are needed for construction activities as well as um, the construction of this um, new sidewalk. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, other questions? Um, I, 
I will ask one. I believe that there is an existing street tree on Warren Street at this location. Is that intended to be retained or replaced? What is the um, expectation there? Correct. There is an existing, um, I believe it's a linden tree, and we are maintaining it and expanding its tree pit um, in order to promote uh, further growth and health. Got it. Excellent. Um, any other questions or comments, commissioners, uh, KC staff, or uh, members of the public? I think we're all set on this. Excellent. And will you be ready for your public hearing on December 1st? We will. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. We will see you then. Thank you. On to new business number three, 1003 to 1013 Harrison Avenue, Eustis Street, Roxbury, Desperate Easement, specific repairs, projection license on a set of petitions by Benjamin Franklin Cummings Institute of Technology. Would the petitioners please introduce themselves, their affiliations, and give an overview of the project and the uh, actions being proposed today? Good morning. Uh, I'm Matt Scheller uh, here on behalf of Benjamin Franklin Cummings Institute of Technology. I'm joined by Chelsea Christensen of Niche Engineering, Sally Gibson, the engineer of record at Studio G, and Guy Busa uh, with Howard Stein Hudson. Um, we are here for the new campus um, building for Benjamin Franklin uh, at, uh, in Nubian Square. Uh, for everyone's uh, knowledge, uh, BFIT is an affordable urban college serving the Boston region and can lead to student uh, success and career readiness in the technology fields. Uh, most students uh, of the college are from the neighboring uh, communities in this area. So the project includes uh, the demolition of the existing uh, blighted industrial buildings, which has been complete. Uh, the, we will then uh, construct a three-story, 66,000 square foot uh, technical education building with uh, classrooms, technical labs, uh, a garage component. Um, project has been through BPA board approvals, zoning, landmarks, parks, and we are here now to run through PIC uh, items. So our current schedule has us uh, starting construction in the spring of 2023 with a completion uh, in the summer of 2024. Uh, so this is the view from the corner of Harrison and Eustis. Um, as you can see, we have a um, street tree, um, streetscape landscape, uh, which is compliant with uh, Boston um, complete streets. Uh, we have a first floor canopy and some sunshades, which we'll get into detail on the um, uh, canopy license. So the next uh, view is looking up. Uh, oh, this is an overview of the um, property. So it's bound by Eustis uh, Street and Harrison Ave. Uh, it backs into the Elliott burial ground. Uh, the building will be built on a portion of the site um, on the corner of uh, Eustis and Harrison. The remaining uh, portion of the site will be uh, retained for future college use. Uh, this plan shows the uh, future Nubian Sims project as well as the parcel 8 development uh, along Melina Cass. Uh, the next uh, slide shows the uh, image of the building looking up uh, Harrison Ave with the street trees, sunshades. Uh, the next one is the look down Eustis uh, Street. And the following one is looking up Eustis the other way, you have Torrent 6 Fire Station in the foreground there, and this is the uh, also the view of the service uh, plaza, uh, pedestrian plaza in the rear of the building. Um, with that, I'll uh, pass it over to Chelsea to run through the uh, specific repairs. Morning, everybody. I'm Chelsea Christensen, Mr. Engineering, uh, civil engineer of record. We are here today for specific repairs of pedestrian easement and canopy license. 
I'll run through the elements on um, each street first, and then um, we can look into more details. For Harrison Avenue, we are proposing a six and a half foot minimum concrete walkway with a four foot furnishing zone of porous pavers and street trees. Um, the pedestrian easement runs along the edge of the building um, to widen the walkway and give it a more generous uh, pedestrian feeling. There are also uh, new street lights proposed have been coordinated with the street lighting division <coughs> and bike racks. Um, on Eustace Street, we are proposing a curb extension at the intersection of Eustace and Harrison as well as continuing the forest pavers and street trees up until the um, sidewalk gets too narrow for them. So we're maintaining a six foot minimum concrete walkway um, and a three foot minimum uh, tree pit and forest paver area where the uh, sidewalk allows. We also have one new street light on Eustace Street, uh, relocating one curb cut and relocating the street lighting cabinet at the request of the street lighting division. Um, this is a more detailed plan of the proposed pedestrian easement. You can see how it um, hugs the edge of the building and then um, along the property line. The total area is uh, 1,466 square feet. And then the canopy license um, has several elements they're they're best seen on that first rendering where you saw the sun shades um, i'll go back to that so it's it's these sun shades over the windows that slightly project into the easement and into the public way on both harrison and eustace i'll go back to that plan so it makes more sense in the plan view so you can see here on harrison they they go over a foot and a half and then on Eustace, they are over um, again a foot and a half. Oh, that, that's the <clears throat> um, And then I do have the rendering of the um, landscape materials as well. You can see here the forest brick limits along the, path, the walkway. This colored concrete um, is standard concrete colored uh, steel blue. Uh, which we've been having some discussion with the Commission for Persons with Disabilities about whether um, what other options we could have for that. So with that, I open up to your questions. Uh, I have a question. The your you seem you got a hydrant and a new street light right on top of each other on Harrison Ave. Is right? Like I am concerned about the our street lighting foundation and this hybrid. Okay, um, yeah, the street lighting division definitely wants the light where it is. We can look at relocating the hydrant. Yeah, and then can you just dimension the distance between the street lights and the trees to make sure, sure. they meet the hydrants? Um, regarding the specialty colored concrete, if that does move forward, uh, is there a plan to enter into an LMI to uh, cover maintenance of that concrete uh, in the future? Yes, we've started drafting the LMI. Great. Commissioners, other questions? see staff, members of the public? All set on this. All right, will you be ready for your public hearing on December 1st? Yes, we will. Excellent, thank you very much, we'll see you then. Thank you. On to new business number four, 250 Center Street, Amory Street, Roxbury Specific Repairs and a petition by 250 Center Street Housing, LLC. Would the petitioners please introduce themselves, their affiliations, provide a brief overview of the project and what is being proposed here. 
Good afternoon. My name is David Aiken. I'm a senior project manager with the Community Builders, and I am joined here by uh, Coleman Horsley from Niche Engineering. Uh, 250 Center Street is a 110 unit uh, mixed income rental building uh, with about 1,500 square feet of neighborhood scale commercial that is currently under construction. We're about 50% complete. And uh, what we are here for today are uh, two items that Coleman has up in front of you. Uh, one is to expand the sidewalk uh, on Center Street, which I think dates back to the earlier Jackson Square master planning phases. Um, quick bit of history is there's you know, about 15 to 20 years worth of work uh, here that uh, the community builders has been involved in with a few of the other local organizations and CDC, such as JPNDC and Urban Edge uh, from the original master plan and then follow up Article 80 projects and 250 Center Street is the last phase of uh, building to move forward here. Uh, so what we have in front is expansion of the sidewalk um, into I think what is the existing uh, turning lane uh, to pick up some additional pedestrian uh, space along Center Street. And the second piece is for a, um, a small uh, plaza for outdoor seating uh, that would be paired up with the uh, commercial space at 250 Center Street. Uh, that plaza is on land that uh, 250 Center Street owns in fee simple, um, but of which the city maintains a highway easement over it. Um, about 12 or 13 years ago, uh, there was a highway easement put in place. Uh, there was a thought at one time that the city might want to connect Center Street and Amory Street uh, at that location there that has since not moved forward. Uh, last year, 250 Center Street purchased a small discontinuance in order to be able to build 250 Center Street, uh, um, but the rest of the highway easement was left in place. Uh, so therefore, we're coming back for specific repairs so that we can have uh, an outdoor space that is paired up with the uh, retail space. We do not know yet what the tenants will be, but it is actively being marketed. Uh, and with that, I can turn it over to Coleman for more specifics. Thank you. Um, again, Coleman Horsley, Niche Engineering, still engineer record for the project. Um, so we originally came for PIC uh, for this project in 2020 and received approval for the private ways on the other side of the project, but we were asked to hold off on this sidewalk reconstruction until Public Works could um, finalize their plans for the Amory Street um, design that occurs in front of the 250 Center project. Um, they received approval for that, I believe, earlier this year. Um, and now we are back in front of you to uh, have these specific repairs approved at this time. Um, as you can see, we are proposing a uh, generous uh, extension of the sidewalk bump out. Um, it, at the widest, it is 18 and a half feet. At the narrowest, it is nine and a half feet. Um, once we get back to the turning lane, um, this is entirely cement concrete. Uh, we are relocating a street light um, to the face of the curb to allow more pedestrian access, um, safe and protected behind the street light. In addition, um, we are proposing one street tree along Center Street in a uh, five foot by 12 foot tree pit, and then one tree um, in that parcel uh, that Dave Aiken mentioned earlier. Um, we would have liked to have put more street trees in. However, um, a telecom company installed uh, a new duck bank um, at some point in the past six months. Uh, we were forced to uh, remove those street trees from, from this project as you might have seen earlier when we started this approval process. Um, the retail plaza is 1.5% uh, max in all directions, concrete unit pavers um, with mulch beds, a concrete staircase leading down to the Amory Street sidewalk. There's an extremely steep slope that uh, the Public Works Department uh, built a ramp to get down to, um, and then also a segmental block retaining wall in between um, the ramp uh, built under the Public Works project and the retail plaza. Um, and with that, I rest for questions. Commissioners? This may be outside of the um, scope of the PIC, but is an accessible route going to be maintained to that retail plaza from Emory Street? The uh, accessible route would be along Emory Street up to the um, the ramp that would be constructed that then connects to center. Um, and then they can make their way back along Center Street into the retail plaza. The only, um, you know, at grade entrance to the plaza is from Center Street. There, um, due to the steep slope, we were required to put a staircase in um, to the plaza from Amory Street. 
Do you know if that would require a variance because of the path is a little bit deviated from the staircase? Slash, is that something that you could check on for next meeting? We can check on that. Offline, if this doesn't fall within the purview of the PIC. We'll check on that, thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, other questions, comments? PIC staff or members of the public? All set on this. All right, sounds good. Will you be ready to come back for your public hearing on December 1st? We will, thank you. Yes. Excellent, we will see you then. Thank you so much. Thank you. On to new business number five, 380 Stewart Street, Stanhope Street, Berkeley Street, Columbus Avenue, Boston Proper, vertical discontinuances, specific repairs on a set of petitions by SCV 380 Stewart LLC. Petitioners, please introduce themselves, uh, their affiliations, uh, give us a brief overview of the project and the specific changes that are being proposed. Good, I had to see if it was afternoon or morning. Good afternoon, um, my name is Jennifer Schultz and I am permitting and land use counsel on behalf of Skanska, who is the proponent and developer of this project. Um, just with me today is John Schmidt from Niche Engineering and I believe either by phone or possibly on video from a remote location is uh, Mike Kaliva from Skanska. Um, so very quickly, I'll just walk you through this and then I will hand it over to John Schmidt from Niche. So the redevelopment proposed at 380 Stewart Street um, has been reviewed and approved by the BPDA and Boston Zoning Commission for the redevelopment of a 625,000 square foot new office building um, at this location. And you can see what you're looking at here is that it fronts on Stewart Street. Um, and then behind the building, um, pretty much to the property's end is private alleyway 559 that then feeds onto Stanhope Street and um, one adjacent property away from 380 at the former Lowe's Hotel is um, fronts onto Berkeley Street. So in the next slide, please. Um, this is a rendering of the street level uh, and pedestrian experience and in particular highlights what will be required for the vertical continuance, a discontinuance, which is before you right now. It is this sort of wind shield um, and otherwise rain and weather shield for the pedestrians below that projects um, at the double first story um, above the entryway and wraps around the building. Um, I, and I'll just note that previously in 2015, when this property was owned by the John Hancock companies, they did successfully conduct a and be approved for a vertical discontinuance that occupied part of the space where we are seeking our discontinuance for. And so we are essentially adding on to what had previously been discontinued. And I'll just note further that the city's right of way interests in the um, sidewalk over which this um, canopy will hang is held by easement, not in fee. And the next slide. And now I think I'm gonna pass it on to John. Thank you, Jen. John Schmidt with Niche Engineering. As you can see highlighted in blue, that is the proposed extend, uh, extension of the discontinuance. The total area is about 670 square feet. And as uh, indicated in the rendering before, it is 20 feet above grade. So, and it is uh, internally trained and will not be discharging any, any storm water into the public way. It'll be brought back into the building. Are there any questions? I, or I can continue through my presentation. We have other actions. Yeah, let's, why don't we move through all the, uh, okay. the proposed actions and we'll come back for questions. Okay, and specific repairs, we'll start on Stewart Street. Um, after uh, numerous meetings with the BPDA and other city uh, personnel, we've come to this design uh, that appears to work for everyone. We were proposing a 10 foot wide concrete sidewalk. The overall sidewalk width varies between 15 and 21 feet. We have the drop off area there, as you can see, that has a, a ramp for pedestrian access from the drop off onto the sidewalk. We have a strip of pervious pavers, and then we have areas um, of raised planters where that include up to um, five street trees, and we also have five new street lights, uh, an under drain and irrigation system, and we have a space for, on the right side of the screen for, uh, for uh, 
move bikes. We are also relocating the existing crosswalk, mid-lock crosswalk, to closer to the left here. Um, that makes it better for uh, pedestrian and vehicular access for sight lines. Uh, moving on to the next area, at the intersection of Berkeley and San Hope Street, which is not part of the project, well, it's through the discussions with the BPDA, we've been asked to look at some offsite improvements, and this is being one of them. Stanhope at um, excuse me, Stanhope at Berkeley, we have a raised type table tabletop crosswalk here. Um, it's approximately eight feet wide. We have new striping and signage that provides a nice, safe pedestrian experience through the tabletop with the uh, tactile strips at the ends. At the ends. As you look to the left, we have the intersection of Stanhope and Private Alley 59. Through the BPDA process, we've been asked to provide a crosswalk from our project site to Stanhope Street, and that is the, uh, the crosswalk you see on the left. We also have an unusual existing condition on the right, where Stanhope um, comes down and circles in to, you can see in the gray area, an existing ramp that crosses diagonally across the crosswalk. We looked extensively to relocate this ramp to be run parallel with the street, but that would require uh, extensive work on property that we don't control because Private Alley 559 is privately owned. We cannot uh, go in there without the abutter's approval and reconstruct this area. And in doing, and I have some. Uh, let me just go ahead. So this you can see here the existing condition as the sidewalk comes down Stanhope and turns into the former Lowe's Hotel building, which also abuts a loading dock. You can, there's a plush area near the doorway that serves as a cross, that serves as a ramp now that crosses diagonally to the right where you see the flush sidewalk over there. Here's another view as you can see the flush sidewalk on Stanhope and uh, the, how the intersection looks. So after numerous uh, conversations and meetings with the BPDA and staff, including um, William Moose and Nick Schmidt, the consensus was to just widen this striped side, this widen the striped area um, to provide uh, visual cues to pedestrians as well as to vehicular traffic that this is a pedestrian zone. Um, as I noted at the top, uh, between those two striped areas is a loading dock that serves the former Lewis Hotel. And as I move to the left, um, another offsite improvement was to provide a bump out at the intersection of Columbus Avenue and Canner, Canner Place. And that bump out is provided on the right side of the intersection, and that provides a better pedestrian experience and safe zone, and also narrows the intersection to make the crossing a little bit safer for pedestrians. Um, we are also over a bridge deck here, so what we are proposing is uh, installing a tactile strip on that walk without actually uh, damaging or excavating that. Our hope is that we can do it with some kind of flu down uh, tactile strip there on that walkway to provide a nice, um, to provide a safe landing and warning to pedestrians that this is indeed a crosswalk. The final uh, action before you is the installation of uh, recharge wells. We have, uh, and this, we have three, three recharge wells uh, proposed on Stewart Street. The project is committed to capturing and recharging the one and a half inches of stormwater that fall on the parcel, which uh, requires a 24,000 gallon tank. The wells will be approximately 35 feet deep. Uh, this concludes my presentation. Thank you very much, uh, commissioners. Uh, yeah, on Stewart Street, you're getting rid of that one crosswalk, right, that goes to the bump in, but you're leaving the ramp to get people to make accessible parking, is that true? The, the idea is this is a drop-off area, so similar to what we have to the W Hotel, a few blocks down, cars can pull over, drop off, and then they can access um, to the sidewalk with that ramp. Uh, right. We originally had a we originally had a tactile strip there, but we were asked to remove that just so. On a crossing. Yep. That a crossing. Um, so there are long-term plans for the accessible parking that's on street along this stretch. Um, however. Um, we're still working on the timing of those changes with the conjunction of this project. Um, so if this construction does start prior to the implementation of some of those long-term plans, including um, a bike lane on Stewart, um, we just ask that you be in contact with our office um, to have those spaces relocated um, because there are a significant amount of on-street accessible parking spaces on the stretch of um, Stewart Street. Thank you. Thank 
Can you uh, take us back to the um, crosswalk at the intersection of uh, Stanhope and mm -hmm. LE 559? Yes. Um, so you, you noted that uh, in order to make a more traditional crosswalk here would require uh, making some changes on property that you do not control. And I'm curious, has there been, have there been conversations with that particular abutter about uh, the possibility of making changes there um, that would uh, make for a more uh, typical uh, accessible crossing here? Uh, there, there have been, and um, Mike, if you're on and would like to speak, feel free. Otherwise, I'll speak on Skanska's behalf. Um, there have been many conversations with uh, the hotel. Um, as we, we, John and I have been referring to it as the former Lowe's Hotel, it very recently changed hands. And um, the new owner, although they have written a letter of support for the project, is uh, the most polite way to say is not inclined um, to make uh, any further considerations or concessions on their property. We've probably had over a half dozen conversations with them and uh, this is the best that we can do. Understood and appreciate the uh, work to try to get to uh, a better and more uh, accessible outcome uh, and to find an alternative uh, in uh, lieu of that. Um, second question, the intersection of Columbus and Connors Place um, mm -hmm. is, can, can you explain a bit more uh, about the uh, the surface mounted uh, detectable that you're proposing um, have you reviewed that with the Disabilities Commission? Is there, uh, I mean, forgive my ignorance on this, but is there precedent for application of such a, a tactile approach in Boston? Uh, and what are our expectations around uh, ongoing maintenance and repair of that? I do know that they are available. Um, I've seen them installed. I don't think I've seen them installed in Boston. Um, we were asked to provide uh, some type of improvement there. And again, it is a bridge deck and it is outside of our limit of scope and we're not in a position to demolish the bridge or just to, to cause any harm to the bridge. So our proposal was to find it one of those, uh, to find a tactile strip that can be adhered to the existing crosswalk to improve the existing condition. As far as long-term maintenance goes, um, it's been my experience that these are uh, subject to sidewalk plows, if that is how you maintain this bridge. Um, but for normal shoveling purposes, um, it, it will be fine. And would the project proponents be willing to commit to providing maintenance uh, of that and replacement of that if it is dislodged? I can't speak for my client, but we will be happy to let you know at the public hearing. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be great. I mean, just speaking on behalf of Public works, although I, I'm not actually certain that we maintain this bridge. But uh, you know, knowing that uh, the tactiles are, um, you know, not uh, they, they don't have a, a, the same lifespan of the sidewalk. And uh, given that this is a uh, a new product uh, for Boston, uh, we would certainly uh, appreciate a willingness to maintain if that is possible. Um, so we'll just look for a future comment on that. Uh, commissioners, any uh, questions, comments? Yes, the staff or members of the public. All set on this. All right. Will you be ready for December first for your next hearing? Absolutely. We will. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you very much. We'll Thank see you. you Bye-bye. And on to our last order of business of new business. Uh, new business number six, one hundred Clarendon Street, Boston Proper, granted location on a petition by RCN Telecom Services LLC, EBA of Sound. And I believe that the petitioners are actually in the hearing room. Uh, so uh, please uh, go ahead and introduce yourselves, your uh, affiliations, and uh, what is being proposed here. And I think uh, we will be sharing, uh, screen sharing uh, the plans uh, that we have. Yes, my name is Alex Ortiz. I'm the senior construction manager for RCN slash Astound. Uh, we're requesting permission to dig to the Hancock garage, which is at 100 Clarendon. Uh, we will be coming off a of manhole on Stewart Street and going south. It digs about 300 feet. Um, that will allow us to offer service to 100 Clarendon, 145 Dartmouth, 165 Dartmouth, and 175 Dartmouth, part of the South Bay um, Gateway Project that's uh, 
new towers that are going up. Um, thank you very much. I'm just trying to understand if we're able to get plans up or not uh, on the screen. Uh, we're not able to see it. Uh, I, I can, Ashley, if you can do that, go for it. If not, I can try. But. Yep, um, I have them kind of queued up. Um, I'll just try to get it up there. Can you all see that? Uh, Todd? Yep, all set. So here's the plan of the dig. Like I said, it comes from an Eversource manhole on Stewart. Um, it goes south onto Clarendon. Uh, we're gonna end up in front of the garage, which is the Hancock garage at 100 Clarendon. And like I said earlier, it'll uh, allow us to offer services um, to 145, 165, and 175, 171 Dartmouth, which is a new tower that's gonna be built. Got it. Uh, commissioners, any questions, comments? PIC staff or members of the public? I believe we're all set on this. All right. Will you be ready for your public hearing on December 1st? Yes, we will. Excellent. We will see you then. Thank you so much. Uh, and with that, uh, I think we have concluded our agenda for the day. Um, do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Recording.